Today we're going to look at polynomials and some of their characteristics. A polynomial, recall from Algebra 1, is a term or sum of terms where each term is the product, so multiplication, of a real number coefficient and a variable with a whole number exponent. So I could have just a number or I can have numbers multiplied with letters, or I can have just letters too. But any letter has to have a whole number exponent. The degree is the greatest exponent of a polynomial. So you'll look at all the terms and see which is your highest exponent. Standard form, the polynomial is written so the exponents decrease from left to right. So you'll start with your highest exponent on your variable and then your next highest and so on. Let's go quickly over this chart. If I have f of x equal to just a number, so I gave you an example here. This is called a constant and the degree is zero. A linear your exponent on your variable is going to be to the first power. So that has a degree of 1. And that would draw a line. An example of that is 3x minus 4. If you draw a constant, you'll have a horizontal line every time. This is a monomial because there's only one term. This particular linear is a binomial since there's two terms. If I didn't have the constant part on that linear, I would have a linear monomial. So whether it's a monomial, binomial, that doesn't necessarily depend on its type. You have to just look at how many terms it has. The type is determined by your degree. A quadratic has an exponent of two. I don't have to have the other terms, but I could. Here is an example of a quadratic. I still have a quadratic if I deleted those last two terms. As long as I have one term with an exponent of two, which it does have, that is a quadratic. If I have three terms like I do here, it's a quadratic trinomial. But I also could have a quadratic binomial if I took off one of the terms. And I could have a quadratic monomial if I took off two of the terms. If the degree is three, you have a cubic. And this is just standard form, but as long as you have a term with a third power as your exponent, the other terms may or may not be there. They can, they don't have to. So here I have a cubic trinomial. It has three terms. My degree is three. And a quartic is x to the fourth. I gave you an example of that one. And usually anything above a fourth degree, they'll just call them a polynomial. Let's look and determine the polynomials and then we'll determine their degrees. This first one is not a polynomial. This last term I can write as three and x minus 1, since I've divided, I could write that as an exponent of negative 1. Since this has a negative exponent on the variable, I don't have a whole number exponent. Recall whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can't have any negatives on whole numbers. This one is not a polynomial. This next one, this term... I can write as negative 4n to the 1 half power. And that's a fraction. And so if I have a part, I don't have a full whole, those are not going to be polynomials either. It has to have whole numbers, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. This next one is also no. I've got a negative. As an exponent, I don't have a whole number on my variable, so this one's no. This next one is a yes. This is a polynomial, and it is a 
fifth degree. And it's a binomial since I have two terms. Okay, so this one is a yes. So I'm going to cross those off. On the next one, the square root of 5, that's the letter is not in the square root. This is s to the first power. So this one is a polynomial. So this one's a yes. And then on this one, it had four terms, and the degree was four on that because that's your highest exponent. I have a trinomial here. All of my variables have whole number exponents. This is to the one half, or to the one. This negative one half in front is just a number, and you can have real numbers. You can have negative numbers multiplied. You just can't have exponents um, that are negatives. So this one is a yes. And the degree is the highest exponent, so the degree on this one is three. This next one has a variable in the, X, in the denominator. I could write, write this as 10x to the negative 1. So this one is going to be a no. And my last one is a yes. And the degree on this is 1. Yes, I'm supposed to circle the ones that are yeses. So I crossed the ones off that were no's. On our multiple choice, let's try these. A polynomial can have constants, it can have exponents, and it can have variables. So it can have all of the above. A polynomial does not use division with a variable. Because if I divide by a variable, that's the same thing as having a negative in the exponent, and the exponents have to be whole numbers, so that won't work. Uh, multiplication with variables is allowed. Subtraction with variables is allowed. And addition with variables is allowed. You cannot have a root, though, because if I have a root, that's going to be an exponent. That is a fraction or decimal. It's not a whole piece. Polynomials must have variables. That's false. I can have a polynomial that's just a number. So I can have just y equals negative 3, where it's equal to just a number. If you add or multiply polynomials, you will still have a polynomial. That's true. Let's look at the symmetry for polynomials. If you have an even function, that has y-axis symmetry. So you can fold it on the y-axis and it'll fold into two equal pieces. If a function has odd symmetry, they will call this um, symmetry about the origin. It's 180 degree rotational symmetry around the origin. Think of yourself having a spinner. So this first one is going to be odd. And on the spinner, the fixed point is the origin. And if I spin that function, if I were to flick it, it would spin 180 degrees and land on top of itself. So you can see that this piece, if I rotate it 180 degrees, will become that piece. It'll rotate right on top of it. And this piece down here would rotate up here and be on top of that. So it will look like the exact same function. Another way if you have trouble rotating that in your head is if you reflect it over X and Y, that's the same thing as 180 degree rotational symmetry. If you compose two reflections together one over the y-axis and one over the x-axis, and it won't matter which order, you will get the 180-degree rotational symmetry. So if I took this piece and I reflected it over y, and I reflected this piece over y, 
So that one would go over here. So if I reflect each of those over Y and then reflect them over X, you can see that that's gonna reflect on top of itself up here. So if I compose two reflections, one over X and one over Y, that's the same thing as 180 degree rotational symmetry. So if you can rotate it in your head, great. Otherwise, just reflect it over X and Y and see if it lands on top of itself. So this one is odd. This next one is also odd. If I spin it around the origin, remember that's the piece that's fixed, 180 degrees. And then this one at the end is also odd. So those are my odd ones. Even will have the y-axis symmetry. So notice you can't fold that on the y-axis and have it fold on top of itself. But on this one, the third one, this is even. If I fold it on the y-axis, it does fold on top of itself. The next one is even, and this one, I can't fold it on the y-axis, and I can't spin it around the origin. I'd have to spin it around this point up here, but I'm not spinning it around the origin on this one, so this one's neither. So we've looked at if you have a graph, how to determine if it has even or odd symmetry. Let's look at equation. So if I ask you to do this algebraically, you're going to replace all x's with negative x. And if after replacing all your x's with negative x, you get the same as the original function, so all the signs are the same, then that's an even function. If I replace x with negative x and my new, after replacing, everything is opposite of the original function, that means I have odd symmetry. Now with polynomials, I know you can cheat on this and look and see if you have all even exponents, the function's even, and if you have all odd exponents, the function is odd. But this symmetry test goes into other classes because you might have y equals the sine of x, or y equals the opposite of the square root of x cubed. So the, symmetry, the algebraic test will work on any function, not just polynomials. Okay, so let's go ahead and check here. On this first one, we're going to determine if it is even, odd, or neither by algebraically doing the symmetry test and then deciding. So I know we know the answer right now that it's even, but let's show why. In the homework, you're gonna to have to show this. So you're gonna place all your x's with the opposite of x. So I'm gonna put opposite of x to the six plus five times negative x squared. And when you take a negative to the sixth power, it becomes positive. So this will be x squared, or x to the sixth. When you take the negative and square it, that gives you a positive. So this is going to be plus 5x squared. And so this is what f of negative x equals. And notice this is the same as the original function. So f of negative x does equal f of x. So this is an even function. On the next one, I'm going to replace all my x's with negative x. There's not an x to replace on this side, so that'll just be 3. And that's still the same as the original function. So f of negative x equals, well, f of x is 3. That's 3 right there, so it's equal to f of x. And since this happens, that means it's even. On the next one, f of negative x equals 5 times negative x squared minus 7 times negative x to the fourth. When I take a negative and square it, it's positive, so this is 5x squared. When I take a negative to the fourth power, it's positive, but then I'm multiplying it times a negative, so this is going to be negative 7x to the fourth. And that's the exact same thing as I had in my original function. They all have the same signs. So it was positive on that. It was negative on that. So f of negative x equals f of x, which means this is even. 
And I want you to go back up here and notice I would plug in negative x into this and I could determine if y equals sine of x is an even or odd function. Same thing if I did it on this one. Let's go ahead and look here on the next one. I'm going to replace f of x with f of negative x. So that's going to be 6 times negative x. So that's just negative 6x, which is the opposite of the original function. The original function is 6x. So this is equal to the opposite of f of x which means this function is odd. On the next one, I have f of negative x equals negative x to the fifth minus 5 times negative x. Simplifying that, negative to the fifth power is going to be negative. So this is negative x to the fifth. Any negative to an odd power is negative. Any negative to an even power will be positive. This now will become negative 5 times negative x, which is plus 5x. And notice this is exactly opposite the original, and this one is exactly opposite the original. So this is exactly opposite of that. So f of negative x equals the opposite of f of x. All my signs are opposite the original function. So that means it's odd. On the next one, f of negative x equals negative x to the third plus 2 times negative x. And negative to an odd is negative. And this will also be 2 times negative x gives me negative 2x. The original, that was plus, now it's minus. This was plus in the original, now it's minus. So it's exactly opposite the original. So that means it's an odd function. And last three. So for this one, replace x with negative x. That's negative x to the fifth plus 5. Negative to an odd power is negative. So it's negative x to the fifth. And the plus 5 won't change. Notice the first term changed signs, the second one did not. So it's not the same and it's not opposite for the original one. So this one is going to be neither. Now any constant, even though this is an odd number, this means I have no x's. I could write this as x to the 0. So this would be an even considered an even term, and that one's going to be an odd. This one had an odd exponent, this one has an even. So I'm mixing my exponents. Whenever you have a constant, even if it's an odd number, if you have a constant, you don't have any variables, you have zero variables, you have a zero exponent on a variable if you were to put it in there. So on that one, you're going to get uh, neither. On the next one, replace x with negative x. So a negative to the fifth is still negative. And when I square a negative, that becomes positive. So this is going to be times a positive 5. So you'll get 5 times x squared. The first term is opposite the original. The second term stayed the same. So you're mixing them. This has an odd exponent. This has an even. So this is neither an even nor an odd function. Last one f of negative x equals negative x to the sixth minus six times negative x cubed plus three times negative x. So in this case, f of negative x, this is an even exponent, so that's going to be x to the sixth. And this is an odd, so this is a negative to an odd will give me a negative, and that's times a negative, so that becomes positive then. So this term is plus six x cubed. And the last term, 3 times negative x, is minus 3x. The first term stayed the same. The second two are opposite the original. So I've mixed. I've got an even exponent here, an odd, and an odd. So when you've mixed them, this is neither an even nor an odd function. 
and that completes today's note.